In this video, we're going to do another example involving the sum of moments about a point. And in this particular case, we're going to do is we're going to use the information we know about the sum of moments about a point to help us determine something else, another variable such as mass or force or perpendicular distance. So in this example, we have a crane and the crane has four different masses that we're considering. So here what's happening is this jib here called DB has its own mass which acts through its center of mass at G1 and it's hoisting a mass which we'll call M. Then over on the left side we have another jib which we'll call um, C or BC. It has its own mass and it acts through G2. And then over here at G3, there's a counterweight. And so what the question's asking us is, the crane hoists a two megagram load upward at a constant speed. So that's this. And the jib DB is 1.5 megagrams with a center of mass acting through G1. And the jib BC is 0 0.5 megagrams with a center of mass acting through G2. So what we need to find is, we need to determine the required mass of the counterweight so that the resultant moment about point 8, or about point A, is zero. So over here we have the, our, our given, so M is two megagrams, MG1, okay, the mass of this jib here is 1.5 megagrams, and the mass of jib uh, BC, okay, is 0 0.5 megagrams. And so what the question's asking us is we need to find mg3. So to do this, we would just use our sum of moments equation here. So as we know, the sum of moments about point A is, uh, sorry, the resultant moment about point A is equal to the sum of moments about point A. And of course, before doing any calculation involving moments, what we're going to do is we're going to define which way is positive. In this case, let's do clockwise as positive. So clockwise will be positive for us. Okay, so we'll say that clockwise is positive. Okay, so remember, the resultant moment about point A is zero. So that's another given. So that means we can write this as the sum of moments about point A is equal to zero. So what that means is, when we write our equation, this side of the equation will be zero, and then we just plug in our numbers. So as in before, we're just gonna start plugging in our numbers for the different moments. So let's start on this side here. We'll go from right to left, and we'll plug in the different moments. So the mass of, uh, of, of this, mass here is 2.2 megagrams, okay? Now luckily for this question, we won't have to use Newtons, we won't have to convert it to Newtons because the conversion is a constant which we would just end up factoring out anyway. So we don't have to worry about converting it to, to Newtons. So two megagrams times the perpendicular distance from point A. And in this case, it's 12.5 meters. As you can see, this moment is going to be positive. There's no negative sign in front of it because the mass acts this way and it's to the right of point A, so it'll cause a clockwise uh, rotating tendency. That's what M will do. Let's take a look at G1. So the mass of G1 is 1.5 megagrams. And as you can see, it's on the right side of A. And again, it will have a clockwise tendency, so it will be positive. So we'll put in a plus 1.5 megagrams and its perpendicular distance from point A is 9.5 meters. 9.5 meters. Okay, let's look over at uh, G2. So the mass of this jib here is um, 0 0.5 megagrams. Okay. And since it's on the left side of A, it causes a 
counterclockwise rotation, so it will be negative. So minus 0 0.5 megagrams times its perpendicular distance from A, which is, oh, I forgot to put that in, it's 4 meters. Okay, I'll write that here, 4 meters. Okay, so times 4 meters. And then now let's consider the uh, counterweight here. Now we don't know what that is, that's what we're trying to solve for. So minus mg3, okay, the mass of g3, times its perpendicular distance from a. And again, this will be minus because it's on the left side and it causes a counterclockwise rotation or counterclockwise tendency. So times 7.5 meters. And what we can do here is we can simplify this expression here. Maybe we can simplify all this. So when we add these up, we would get 37.25 megagram meters minus mg3 times 7.5 meters. So now all we have to do is just have to rearrange. And what we get is mg3 is equal to 37.25 megagram meters divided by 7.5 meters. And that will give us 4.97 megagrams. So what this means is, is that if this counterweight was 4.97 megagrams, that will cause the resultant moment about point A to be zero.